Well, hello, hello, my beautiful Jimmies. Gosh, I have not been in your energy in so long. So I want to thank you guys. It's you and Cancer, and there's a couple others, um, for watching my videos. Even though I haven't been on YouTube, you're watching the old ones. So I appreciate you sharing them and liking them and re-watching them. You guys are old souls, even though people don't take you seriously, <laughs> you're an old soul. So you kind of know, for some of you that have been watching, you know there's still some good messages. Well, they're all good messages, but there's still some relevant messages that uh, you probably have leaned on. And I want to thank you for watching my videos and letting me be the thought for you. Uh, when you seek some wisdom. I really appreciate you. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Cindy. My son is Gemini. So uh, my ascending is Aquarius and yeah, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> anyway, so today's video, I have not done this in a long time, but we're going to do a little bit of astrology. This is for the new moon in Aquarius. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of tarot. So I'm just doing a four card pull with the tarot. Uh, I haven't been in your energy in a long time. So bear with me. Uh, I am doing a Pluto. And for the Geminis, I know you want to know this. Uh, because these the Pluto is going to help you. I'm doing a Pluto series. And the Pluto is going to help you. For those things that you have researched and researched within yourself and are still not getting. So I would watch uh, the Pluto series and what you do for those of you that don't know anything about astrology or just learning about astrology and really want to know more about astrology. This is why I'm kind of doing it this way. I'm taking the relevant planets, the ones that everybody's talking about, and I'm trying to bring it home to you. Um, so it's, there's not any order, you know, right now, Pluto is this big transition that's coming um, to society on the globe and then personally. So I thought I got to dive deep because Pluto is a deep planet. Uh, Pluto is prominent in my chart. And... Um, Pluto will bring up your fears and your obsessions and your trauma. So I channeled for a week and a half, maybe two, and I wanted to know not just what trauma is in these houses with where Pluto's at, but I want to know how to get out of them. So I want practice. You guys know me. Those of you that know me, you know, scientific, if, it's, if there's science behind it or there's data behind it, I want to know, right? I want to know step by step. So that's what I did. <clears throat> But it caused me to go deep into these houses because I can see your past lives and your present lives and your future lives. So, I'm sorry, hold on a second. That Gemini's coming out. <laughs> uh, my throat chakra. Okay, so for those of you that, and I'll just talk about, uh, I am going to talk a little bit about it here, but I just want to let you know, Pluto is right here. So if you go to your natal chart, for those of you that don't know, Astrology. The natal chart is the chart that happens when you first, when you're born, the moment you're born, <clears throat> the moment you're born. That's where your Pluto is. That's the theme that's going to be happening in your life um, for the lifetime. It's like a roadmap. Then we have the transiting chart, which means Pluto didn't stop moving, right? It's still moving. So it's moved into Aquarius. So where it is in your natal chart may not be where it is now in Aquarius okay so um well probably won't be in your in your natal chart um anyway <clears throat> so you look at those two houses you're gonna look at your natal chart and see where was planet where was Pluto when I was born and that's the house and video you want to look at for my series and then you want to look at the other video which is you look at to see where your Aquarius sign is, and this is the Aquarius sign. You look to see there, and whatever Pluto is, whatever house that is now where your Aquarius is, Pluto is transiting right now and will be for the next 20 years. And that's why it's so prominent because it's this big transition. And um, that'll kind of help you. So those are the two videos. But I'm telling everybody to watch all the videos because this kind of helps you see the people around you and their trauma, what's going on and and uh, how you deal with them and how they deal with you and why do they have those trigger points and what's going on and why does their life look like that and why does it look like this, right? <clears throat> so, 
that's that's the two that you want to look at. You want to look at the Pluto in your chart, in your natal chart, and you can go to astro.com. I have my own software, but you can go to astro.com um, and you can get it for free. So uh, for today, for February 9th, it's coming up. You have the new moon in Aquarius, um, and for you, it's in your ninth house, right? So if you're uh, Gemini ascending or Gemini rising, it's in your ninth house. So your ninth house is all about your belief systems, right? So what you do is you take Gemini and you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? But if you look, there's all these planets and these big planets too going on in this part of your chart if you're Gemini ascending, okay? That means, uh, or Gemini uh, rising. So it's in your ninth house. So the new moon is about new beginnings. It's about what am I going to do moving forward? What do I want to like manifest? What do I want to focus on? What do I want to do in this area of your life, right? Because it's in your ninth house. The ninth house is about your belief systems, religion, um, the occult, um, tr foreign travel. A lot of you love to travel. I, being a Gemini, love to travel. I'm a Gemini Sag and Aquarius, so that's all I love to do is travel. Um, so if you're thinking about foreign travel, if you're thinking about um, the religion, the belief system that you've had, the occult, like the astrology, like learning astrology, uh, tarot, stuff like that. That's kind of lit up for you. And you guys are old souls. So when I, and I pulled cards already, but when I was looking at this, I was seeing that you're, this is your ninth and your 10th. And you have this, not everybody, but the bigger group has this. And I've had to learn this too. Uh, has this, I'm not going to say it exactly, because I can hear Jim and I say that's not my belief. Um, overall, maybe it's a habit because of the belief system that you grew up with, right? You believe that there are certain things that you cannot attain or even want to try for because you don't have the education or the finances. <clears throat> uh, you don't have to, I won't even just say that, the resources, right? So... I think you're having to understand your resourcefulness in this um, and just how your belief system can hold you back, if that makes any sense. Okay, that's what I'm getting for Gemini's. And I'm getting clues, so I'm getting the, the channel, but then I'm getting clues when I look at this chart because your ninth house, your tenth house, and your eighth house are all lit up. They're all activated. They're, and depending on if you have planets in your natal chart, they're, they could be really activated. But the tenth house is um, your reputation in this life. A lot of people say it's the career because it's it's the it's what you do out in the world right and you've had saturn here so i feel like your belief systems are being challenged or have been and if not they're going to be too because you've got pluto here so some of you may have heard word hmm, because of this uh, mercury here some of you may have heard, this pluto transit for the next 20 years is really important for you it's helping you understand that you are more than you believe that you are. It's helping you not even just understand, but see it. You're going to see it in the world. Um, that you can do more. And that is, a, uh, when I say that, I, I kind of feel like, oh, God, I got to work more. I got to do more. No, not like that. Like, you can, you are bigger than you think you are. You are more than you give yourself credit for. Okay. Now, Things have been hard lately because you've had Saturn that moved into Pisces, right? And that's your 10th house. So for you, Gemini ascending, things got harder. You're not opposed to hard work. So I can see that some of you may have gotten like uh, a new position, like in your job, you got a bigger position or you got the accolades that you deserved, but it's requiring you to do more work, right? 
um, that's your 10th house, but that's Saturn. Saturn is going to restrict it. So you may have gotten a couple months ago, maybe even six months ago, like I got this thing uh, or I got more accolades in the world or if you're on the internet, if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, on social media, you know, my business is building, I'm getting more followers, I'm da 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 da, da all of that, but Saturn is restrictive. So as much as you got that, you learn you you're having to learn to make a routine out of it, make it better for yourself and kind of balance you and it, if that makes any sense, uh, because you may have gotten some st stumbling blocks or you may have had some stumbling blocks come before you, right? Um, and that's Saturn. Saturn's going to make you what Saturn is doing in this house for you is making you, I don't know why Taylor Swift has been coming to my mind lately because I'm not a Swifty, um, but she's been coming to my mind lately. I feel like, do you see her and how she goes, 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 but it's not a, I'm just going to go because I have all this energy. It's a directed you know, I've got to do this concert, I've got to meet the people, I've got to do this interview, I've got to do, and she's a honed celebrity, she's honed, like, she's been doing this, but that's because she's been practicing it for years now, you know, she's good at what she does because she's been practicing it, that's what Saturn's making you do in your, in your 10th house, it's gonna, it's making you practice, it's making you do things, it's making you, it almost feels restricted, like you can't have freedom because you have this thing out in the, the as a public figure, as your career goes on, um, whatever this is, it's almost like you get the freedom of it and then it restricts you. It, that's just because it's trying to hone you. So you're going to be honing whatever it is that you're doing in the next well, we got about two years left. So it's been doing it for a year. That's the Saturn. Saturn's going to make you the best. Like I've told you about Daddy Saturn, if you've seen me, I call him Daddy Saturn because he's like the father figure. When you're a teenager and you want a car and you're like, I just want the car, Dad. And he's like, well, I'll willingly give you, give you the car if you show me that you can be responsible for it. And that's kind of what this what's happening in your 10th house is like show Saturn that you're responsible for all of this attention for all of this reputation for all of this um, money that would be coming in like you got to do the work you got to hone it okay but for the new moon because it's Aquarius and it's in your ninth house I it this is connected all because it's about your belief system I feel like a lot of you People believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Oh, my poor little Gemini. <laughs> like, I feel like you almost get uh, thrown off when people believe in you about this thing that you do or this thing that you can do or this thing that you can be. Maybe you show them and then they are looking to you and you're like, I'm, I'm not the authority, but that's what this 10th house is. And the ninth house is working on your belief systems about that. Your understanding about who you are. Like I said, you're bigger than you know, and you, you don't give yourself enough credit. Like I, I know there's a lot of like, whatever people think about Gemini's, you know, they're too, you know, flaky and they're too, what, whatever. I mean, that people are going to think what they're going to think. You, you, it's almost like you sort of, by default, begin to believe them. Yeah. And it's only because, <laughs> part of it is because you're, uh, you're an adaptive sign. So you sort of flow and go. And that became your belief system that they put on you. And you didn't see it enough for you to like say no that's not what I am or let them believe what they want but then it sort of kind of went in and I hope I'm explaining this right it sort of kind of went in and by default became your belief system if that makes any sense so in this new moon and it being Aquarius and it being in your ninth house it is time Ooh, what I'm hearing is it's time for y'all to do some magic <laughs> 
it's time for you to show the world who you are. <laughs> Doesn't matter whether they're ready or not. Doesn't matter. Don't, 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 because I'm hearing people say they're not ready. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You need to be who you need to be. Aquarian's all about eccentricity. Ex eccentricity. Aquarian's all about doing it in a very, very different way. So your belief system may not. A lot of you, ooh, I just felt this. A lot of you almost have a belief system that you can't even put a name to it because it hasn't even been said to the world it's like well I believe a little bit of that but I believe a little bit of that but I believe it a little bit of that and what I believe in nobody's going to understand because it's a whole bunch of belief systems it's a whole bunch of beliefs that come from very different ways does that make sense so with this new moon I want you to really understand because Aquarius is progressive. It will move you forward, okay? So you're moving forward. I know it has not been easy for you. And y'all are so sweet and kind. And like, even my little Gemini side, I had to apologize to my little Gemini side because it just goes with the flow. But in going with the flow, you're not getting what you want. You're not even saying what you want. You're just kind of doing it's almost like the middle child who just kind of will do the things to sort of just not to be seen um, and do the things because they told them to do the things. Yeah, just not to make waves. That's what I'm feeling. But it's time for you guys to direct your life. It's time. And in this new moon, doesn't, it, it's not supposed to look like anybody else's. It's not. And that's more about the 10th house, too. It, but you have to believe in yourself. And you're going to be transiting Pluto here for 20 years to really understand what you believe in. Not because they told you to believe in it, but because you came to that understanding on your own. Yeah. And you can bring that out to the world. Does that make sense? And you have your 8th house lit up too. For you, Gemini Ascending. Because uh, you have Mars and Venus there. Uh, to me, that means gifts, money. Um, looking better, getting better. But it could also mean a partner. And I know that most of you like partners or want a partner. But that's not, that's not been in the forefront for you. So I feel like... A partner because this is the eighth house this is weird because I've never seen this but I'm seeing for y'all that somebody could come back an old flame wow that's weird an old flame could come back for some of y'all that's interesting because I've never seen that in a chart <laughs> That's really interesting, but this is what I'm feeling. But, like, when they come back, it's because they've been gone so long. It's what I used to say. Yes, you can get back together if both of y'all separate and grow, you know. And that's kind of what I feel like for some of you. The other thing, too, if you've been business focused, if you've been focused on what am I going to do and my attention's out in the world and I don't really, you know, the partner thing, the love partner thing is kind of in the background. For those of you, I do feel like you're going to get some help. And it's going to be very financially fruitful for you. Um, this person or this group or this organization believes in you and believes in what you're doing. But again, Gemini, they believe in you. You have people outside of you believing in you, but you have to believe in you. Okay, this is about you believing in you. Okay, this is what you're going to learn. Maybe those people are right. Maybe they see something I don't see. Maybe I am who I say I uh, who I say I am, who I show the world. Maybe that is part of me. Like that's what I can hear you saying. Now, you may have, or for some of you, it may happen in the next week or two. 
here's some news that's going to jolt you because we've got Mercury here with Pluto. And Pluto brings up your fears, brings up your traumas, brings up your obsessions. So, for some of you, this is very little of you, but for some of you, I can feel like, oh, the old flag comes back and you hear the news of it. You see that person and you're like, ooh, ooh. I, I, that, I thought I cleared all that. Just give it a chance, okay? You're wise enough. You're strong enough. You know enough now. And believe in yourself. To believe in yourself to make the wise choice, okay? In this new moon, um, I want you to focus not on what you think you can accomplish because you've done enough research, because you've taken enough classes, because you put in the time. I don't want you to think that. I want you to focus on, for this new moon for you, don't worry about how it's going to come. I don't want you to worry about how it's going to come because it's. I'm telling you it ain't going to come the way you think it's going to come. That's Aquarius. But I want you to focus on what you want, what you believe in, and what you want. Okay? Like, Geminis have a really hard time because we're so adaptable. We start wanting things because other people wanted them, and then we're like, well, yeah, that's kind of the best thing to do. But that's, you're still not saying to the world what you want. I need you to search inside for what you want your life to be, for what you want your position in this world to be. Okay? Does that make sense to you guys? And that means really digging in and saying, okay, do I want this because I was told to want this? Because I did the right thing by society? Because I did the right thing by relationships? Because I did the right thing by work and my boss? Or do I want something else? If it's in there, that something else is in there if it is something else. Because you had it when you were a child. You just have to uncover it. It's like in the attic, and you got to go uncover that that special thing that you have, okay? And it will cause you to work, because that's that Saturn in, in Pisces. But, because you have Saturn in Pisces, and you are a brainiac, I know some of you think you're not, but you are a brainiac, on an esoteric level, I'm going to tell you this. You can form the formless. So take it from the ether. Take it from the other dimensions. Take it from your higher self. See it and then form it and bring it down. That's what your 10th house wants you to do. Form it and bring it down. Not just see it and feel it. Take the steps to bring it to reality. That, now... I was just talking to somebody about this the other day because I have Geminis all around me. We're really good at seeing it, right? Um, and you research it and over-research it. But to you can take the steps and do the steps. And I was telling my friend, Geminis have this innate knowing that if we write it down our thoughts or what we took from the ether or what we took from our higher self or what we took from God, the, the dimensions, whatever, whatever you call that. If we write it down, whatever we write down makes it more possibility of a reality. Does that make sense? So I'm going to tell you guys for this new moon, if you want a ritual, if you need that and your 10th house is telling you that's probably a good idea, right? Because you got Saturn. In. Saturn wants the work. He wants to see it. <laughs> so I would journal. I think I told another son to journal, but I'm seeing you journaling what you want, how you want your life. And don't stick to it. Don't be like, oh, now I got to think about it, think about it, think about it to manifest it. That's not what I want you to do. I want you to form what you want, form what you feel, the feelings that you want in your life. That's that's an important thing. The feeling that you want in your life. Do you want to feel comfortable? Do you want to feel settled? Do you want to feel stable? Do you want to feel things always go your way? Do you want to feel elated? Do you want to feel happy? Do you want to feel joyful? Like, I want the feeling too, okay? 
And we have this innate knowing that if we write things down, it's more apt to come to fruition. But I don't want you to hold on to the fact that, okay, now i got to research it, do it I, I, for, for just this new moon. And then what's going to happen is if you've focused on this and done the thing and cleared your energy by your Epsom salt bath, then let the universe open itself up to you. Let the universe open itself up to you and show you the opportunities to take the next step. Does that make sense? And that's what this Aquarian new moon is for you. Okay? So, be sure to watch my Pluto series too, because that's going to tell you a lot about it's going to be going on in the next 20 years. And that's going to help you heal that trauma that's been in there. For a lot of you, <sighs> this is what I feel like. For a lot of you, it's not even your just your trauma you're trying to heal like the generation dna changing stuff so yeah yeah be sure to watch that okay so now let's do your tarot so this first position this is your foundation this is where you're at this is what's going on this is the energy that's coming towards you. This is where you're moving towards it. With the decisions that you made and the choices that you've done um, and the area that you've been focused on and kind of your life, this is what's coming towards you. This is what's the time, I guess some of y'all say the timeline it's on, right? Now this is what's holding the block or some of you will call it a block. I say this is the thing you're getting through to get to that right but this is the block this is the stumbling block okay that's this position and then this position is the actual outcome okay so when i'm looking at the first position you have hold up you have the ace of pentacles i keep feeling this i keep feeling like you have been through so much you have an ace you know you're at the foundation you have lost a lot in the last four years a lot and I feel like you see a pinnacle you see a way to build this one pinnacle you see it you're kind of holding it but you're not trusting it that's what I see I feel like if you look here he's got the pinnacle but you see the sunshine and, and the rays around you? And I see that you see it, but I feel like it's almost like I know it's not enough yet. And I don't know what to do next. Because should I invest all of my time in this one pinnacle? Or should I go back to knowing what I know to be true to get me all the finances, to get me the stability which is kind of a lie because you that wasn't even financially set for you or that wasn't even really stable for you. So you're kind of lying to yourself, some of you. Um, but you have the start and some of you see, you have it in your hand. So you have the start, you see the opportunity, you're, you're doing the opportunity. The problem is, is you're not believing in the opportunity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, doing this has caused the Six of Swords, okay? And the Six of Swords, you see how she's bent, that's you, bent, just spent. And see, that's your inner child that you've healed, that you're carrying along with you. And she's tired because she's got these swords. She's been through a lot, and it's almost like you're wanting... This is interesting because I see this as the universe and life sort of taking a hold and moving you forward. So I feel like with this, you see the opportunity. You have it in your hands. You're making the choices with this opportunity, but you're expecting, which is not a bad thing, actually. You're expecting the universe to take hold of you and do things fast like you're used to it happening in the past, right? I hope that makes sense because it's so general. I can't like get specific, um, but it's, uh, I'll give you 
a scenario. It's like I am trying to, like I'm waiting to see what else shows me that I'm supposed to do this more. I'm waiting to see what else comes my way before I move to the next thing or make the next choice or do the extra energy or do the extra thing, right? And yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like you're letting life direct you instead of you directing life. Well, that's kind of what I just said in the, the astrology part. You're letting life sort of take you instead of you directing how you life you, you want your life to be. Because for some of you, you're so tired that you just thought, let's see what happens. <laughs> right? So, this is what's in your way. Which is really interesting because this is the highest card for me. With finances, with stability, with stuff. And... My higher self knows I want to see pentacles when I when I need something tangible to see, right? Um, not emotional, but tangible, right? So this is the Ten of Pentacles, and it's in your way. And I feel like, oh, well, some of you may be focusing on the wrong thing. So instead of focusing on the opportunity to build, you're focusing on the end result of how is it going to make me more money? How is it going to make me more stable? How is it going to, instead of enjoying the journey, instead of enjoying the journey, that's the thing, Gemini. How come you're like, interesting. How come you're like, let the world take me. I'm just kind of going with the flow. It's like a dichotomy. How, I'm just going to go with the flow, but I do want this. But I'm just going to go with the flow, but I do want this. That's what's holding you back. You're not seeing something correctly because you're seeing... It's almost the facade of it. The You're not seeing it clearly, whatever this... Whether it's a relationship, whether it's a partnership, whether it's... Because I do see a lot of y'all, like, out in social media. Mm. It's like you're getting blinded by the light and the... The money. Yeah. Because you're like, well, if I just do more of this, then I will make more money or make more stability. But that's not it. The, what's being... What your soul is trying to understand is your your belief system in yourself, not in what the world can do for you. I hope that makes sense. So, basically, you're going to get this. It's not something that's standing in your way. It's something that you can work with just... How do I say this? Just believe in yourself more than looking out there and trusting in them. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of things, but I'm just going to go with that for right now. I'm I'm probably going to do... Yeah, I'm just going to go with that for right now. Because I'm trying to understand how a Ten of Pentacles... I was trying to understand how a Ten of Pentacles can be in your way. And it's almost like it's the glory of the facade of what this can bring. And it's time to be truthful to yourself and believe in yourself. Like, I don't need to lean on, I don't need to have that money to do that thing. That's what I saw in your other thing, in the astrology part too. I don't need, you need to understand, you need to understand. I don't need the money or the resource which is could be another person could be another entity could be another organization whatever to do the thing that i want to do okay that could be holding you back because you're trying to decide well i know i'm gonna if i go into this then i'm gonna have to like you know i don't know compromise myself in some way compromise what i believe in in some way and it 
you are focusing too much on, well, if I don't do this, then I'm not going to get this. That's what's holding you back. Thank you. I couldn't get it. If you, you think that if you don't do something, you're not going to get the financial backing or the stability backing when you need to stop focusing on what they can do. You've already seen what they can do. Now trust you. Believe in you. Your belief system is being challenged right now. Believe in you that you can do whatever you want. What do you want? Right? Now this is this is the outcome, the devil. And the devil is all about uh ha for me, it's like uh, nobody else would get this except for Gemini's. <laughs> it's about like the joyful time, the happy time, the Maybe this is the time I should tell you guys. For the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, I've kind of put my Gemini side to the back and really delved into my Sagittarius and uh, Aquarius side and sort of put Gemini to the back because in the old days, I was like, she was, uh, my Gemini side would always get me in trouble. <laughs> but my Gemini side is what made me happy. My Gemini, that's what I've discovered. My Gemini side is what's made me gleeful and happy and joyous and in such a great mood all of the time. And I have denied myself that by thinking, oh, well, let me be wiser. Let me be da da da. Let me, whatever I was thinking, you know. When that's not true, I need the Gemini side too. And this is where I see the devil. The devil card to me is like you getting back to that playful, innocent, joyous, happiness self. Sometimes it's addiction in going and traveling or partying or whatever. But I think that you're a little bit wiser to know not to do, not to overdo it, right? So I feel like you're headed, this because this is the outcome, you're headed at a place that you haven't been in a long time. Gemini, you made yourself Gemini for a reason. I mean, I've, say, I've said that to myself too. You made yourself Gemini for a reason. You need to be happy. You need to be joyful. You need to be laughter. You need to be innocent. You need to be taking those risks. Take those risks. Like, that's what a Gemini does. You're supposed to do that. And if you do this, if you believe in yourself, if you trust yourself, if you know that, yes, you can have that even though and not have to compromise what you don't want, you will, because this is your outcome, you will be in that space. Okay? All right, guys. Let me know what's going on in your lives. Let me know if this resonated. Uh, I love you, love you, love you. I am so happy to be back. Uh, my goal for this year is to be on YouTube full time. So I'm trying to get there. But I do need help. I need help from you guys. So if you could like, share, subscribe. I want to thank you guys that were watching all my videos in the past. And really, really, I'm honored that you even thought of me. So I'll see you soon. Bye.